Good morning, team. Thank you so much for hopping on today's call. Episode number 251. And I'm going to take today and I'm going to discuss a section that I've added to the 2025 business planning guide that focuses on your self-development. And today's call is called Right Size Your Self-Development. I felt it appropriate to add a section called self-development, personal and professional growth um, as a section that should be tracked for those of you that want to achieve at a high level. And I did this because it's been proven that you will only perform at the level of your self-development. You cannot be a 25 million, 50 million, $100 million producer with a $10 million level of self-development. And I'm going to dive into my thoughts on this topic today on this 251st episode. But before I do that, I want to remind you of my professional purpose, and that is to help you, the full service, full fee advisor, optimize your productivity and help you become the best version of yourself. Why? Because happy advisors sell more real estate. Um, I believe that. Um, and I do that by teaching you how to handle the challenges and opportunities that you face every single day. And I know that if you can effectively manage those situations that arise on a daily basis in your business, you'll be more productive and you will live a life that is the best version of you. And my ask is that you simply listen today as if we are together on a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, either in my office or on a phone call. So if you want to be successful and consistently hit the vision, your vision and goals, you have to make sacrifices and choices around how you live and operate. You'll need to trade in Netflix, sports and doom scrolling for reading or most of us listen to books to audiobooks, podcasts, educational YouTube videos, online courses and seminars. Jim Rohn, I believe, said it the best. He said, formal education will make you a living. Personal education will make you a fortune. And I truly believe this philosophy. And because of it, I've invested thousands of hours into my self-development since I began um, my journey back in February of 2008 to reinvent myself. When I made that commitment to myself, I realized that I needed to change how I spent my time. And one of my obsessions at that time was Chicago Cubs baseball. I moved to Chicago in 1995. And one of my first Chicago experiences when Amy and I started dating was the bleachers at Wrigley Field. Oh my goodness, I was hooked. So much so that for the decade between 1995 and 2008, when I had this realization that I'm about ready to tell you about, I would watch, listen to, or attend 90% of the games. Now I did the math and I realized that I had to pivot big time because I knew that the amount of time I invested in the Chicago Cubs was super scary, unproductive. So let me tell you the math that I did. Okay. So every season there's 162 games. And if you take that times 90%, that's 146 games. Okay. That I, like I said, either watched, listened to, or went to. And if you take that times three hours per game, that's about 437.4 hours a year. That's the equivalent of reading 62 audiobooks per year or 11, I said, yes, that's 11 40 hour work weeks. Oh my goodness. So when I did the math, I had no choice but to give up that obsession. I, re I reinvested that mostly frustrating time. If you're a Cubs fan, you know what I'm talking about into learning and building my business to the tune of approximately about a thousand hours a year. Okay. And as a result, I doubled my business four times in five years from 2008 to 2013 during a nasty recession. This focus took me from desperation to stability. And to this day, 
I continue to read, learn, editorialize, and turn it into content in the form of these Monday morning pep talks. Now, I want to go through a few points that I've learned along the way. Okay, and I've got I got 10 of them and a couple bonuses here. Um, number one, build self-development into your day. Many of you drive from property to property, location to location. So if you're not on the phone, be listening to an audiobook or a podcast. The late Zig Ziglar referred to this as your automobile university. Okay, be learning constantly. And the best way to do that is in your car. Um, Number two, if you are working on a certain portion of your life or business as a quarterly initiative, focus on books and podcasts or courses that give insight into that specific topic. Number three, listen to the book first. And if it really resonates with you, buy the hardcover version and reread it, marketing it up, marking it up and highlighting it with all of your main takeaways. Use it as a resource your entire life. If it was a life changer of a book for you, keep reading it until the insights sink into your DNA. Okay. Until it, it sinks into your DNA. Number four, if a book after three chapters is not resonating, put it down and move on. Don't waste your time. Lots of books out there. Okay. Number five, pro tip number one, if you read to teach or share, right? So in my case, I'm reading a lot of cases so I can share it with you and teach you. Uh, it's been proven that you retained three times more of the content. So from a retention standpoint, if you find something in a book and you plan to share it, you will retain three times more because you, you're coming at it from a uh, teaching standpoint, your mind is scanning for ways for you to make an impact. Okay. Number six, a book might not hit for you the first time around, first time you read it, but it could on the second or third time. Okay. Um, I read Atomic Habits the first time and I was like, this is, this book's okay. Um, I got through it. Everybody was talking about it. I, I did like it. It, 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 somewhat resonated with me, but I got to tell you the second and third time I wrote it, it was, oh my gosh, maybe it was just in that moment. I was in need of the insights that came from that book. And, um, I always, if I'm fine, if I'm finding myself a little sluggish, I always go back to chapters one and number two in the atomic habits written by James Clear. Just an example of what I'm talking about there. Number seven, Always have books in your queue. Make notes of recommendations and keep them in your library. So if you do get a rec, um, just throw it in your queue, okay? Um, number eight, keep a physical library and a digital library. I've chosen iBooks for my digital library. I can always go back and read them, right? Um, I like that I have them in iTunes. And I'll tell you, there, like I said, there's a lot of books that didn't resonate with me. I, I try to declutter those from my library. Okay. Um, I want to, I want to focus on those that really matter and you'll understand why here in a minute. Um, number nine, if you love a book, I mean, if you really love it, buy 10 of them and give them away. Let me ask you, is there a better way to show your commitment to someone than recommending or giving them a book? If you love a book and you're talking about a book, go buy 10 of them, make a nice little note, you could put a handwritten note with it and send it off to somebody that you care about or you're thinking about. Um, what a what a special thing to do for someone. Number number 10, keep a note in a notes app of all your book recommendations so, so you can easily cut it and paste it in, into an email. Now, what I mean by that is if you have a list of books and so you get to talking to somebody about the, your, your favorite books, just have it there and say, hey, listen, I'm going to send you mine. Go into your notes app, copy paste, put it in an email or a text and say, here's my favorite, here's my favorite list. I don't think you want to give more than about 10, but what a kind of, what, what a cool thing to do for somebody, right? So 
here's my bonus strategy for you from me as you prepare for 2025. I want you to go back in your library and pick the books that had the biggest impact on you and reread every single one of them, maybe sprinkling in a new few books along the way. Do this, especially if you find yourself in a rut or need a spark. These books at one point in time resonated with you for a reason. And I want you to go back and mine, mine for further nuggets of knowledge and inspiration that maybe you've forgotten or just missed the first time around. Do this and just focus your self-development on the best of the best books. The version of you today might, like I said, pick up additional insight from that second or third or fourth time through the book. So that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. I have my list, which you guys are going to get a little information on here in a minute. Um, and I am rereading those. Okay. I want to go back and see if I can mine some more insight. Pro tip number two, do not be an over-motivated underachiever. What does that mean? That's the process of reading all these books and then doing nothing with it. Okay. So just the process of learning will not change your life and business by itself. It's the constant drumbeat of action that will move the needle. Okay. On the follow-up email, that's going to be hitting your inbox here shortly. Um, includes a PDF of my best of the best, my reading list, my library of book recommendations. Now, there are a few that didn't make this version that are still game changers, but I only had room for 26 books in different categories throughout my, you know, business planning guide. And there's a reason for 26, because over the course of the year, those 26 books um, with one read every two weeks will give you those 52 weeks in a year, right? So if you read uh, uh, one of these books every two weeks, OK, one of these 26 books every two weeks for for the year, that'll give you your 52 weeks. OK. And what's funny is it's just going to, you know, it, it's it's just going to take you about 30 minutes a day or a little, little, a little over three hours a week to complete. Now, my guess is that many of you read, listen to or, uh, you know, watch that much news in the morning while you're getting ready for work. OK, while you're ready, while you're getting up and getting ready to go out the door. So we know that there's time. OK, we know that there's time in your schedule to read for 30 minutes a day to give you the 26 books next year. OK, um, the books that I give you on this list, no doubt, are, are going to have a massive impact on you, especially compared to what the news will do for your psyche, especially now in an election year. It reminds me that the simple things are sometimes hard to do, but that is why ELPs and super achievers become ELPs and super achievers. They just have a consistent drive, which fuels the activity it takes for them to move closer and closer to their goals, eliminate, eliminating anchors along the way. Okay. The simple things are sometimes the hardest to do, but it's the ELPs that realize that and they look for the simple and they know that if they do it consistently over a long period of time, it's going to have an impact on them. Your virtual mentors and authors will become some of the most important people in your life if you let them. So grab your remote, turn off the TV and tune into a book that could change your life or give you that much needed spark you've been needing. Okay. You've been looking for that. You've been wanting. It's your choice. Okay. Hard now and easy later or easy now and hard later. That's your choice. Is it hard now? The work and effort that you're going to put in to make it easier later worth it? Or do you want it to just be easy now? Go through life. Not really putting in much effort, knowing that if you go, if you live like that, it's at some point it's going to get hard for you. Okay. So let's put that, let's put in the work now. So it's easy later. Okay. Look for my reading list in this week's follow up email that's going to be hitting your inbox here shortly. Um, 
it will be attached to this episode, or you can go to my website at askjimmiller.com. Or if you're not on the email, if you want to uh, jump on at uh, Jim and ask me, just send me an email at Jim and ask Jim uh, to subscribe and uh, get my resources each week. Listen, if there ever becomes a time where you don't want the email anymore, just unsubscribe. I am not going to take it personally. OK, but I think there's a lot of really great content content that I put out there. I just my goal is to impact as many people as I can through these Monday morning pep talks. Um, it's my passion project. I love doing it. I love writing and uh, um, and I appreciate you. So thank you so much for jumping on the call today and uh, I'll be back on next week. Thank you.